So hello, I'm Frederick Dunn, and today I'm going to take you outside with me and we're going to look at some wildlife. But first, I'm going to talk to you about the equipment that I wear. In fact, I'm going to rant a little bit today. These are redhead gloves. They're my favorites. They're super soft. They are a uh, polyester blend, so you don't make a lot of noise. If you're going to go outside and video or photograph wildlife, you have to stay quiet. If you want to sit still in the snow for a long time, you have to be warm. If you're gonna wear a ski mask, it needs to have one of these face vents in it so that the air goes in and out your mouth, not up by your eyes, because what's gonna happen, it's gonna fog your viewfinder. We can't have that. So we need to be quiet and warm. Now this is another redhead ski mask here, which would be nice, but you know what? It doesn't have the face vent. So unless you're wearing goggles or something, if you have to look through a viewfinder, that's not what I can wear. Now these gloves are nice too, but I want you to listen to them when you're touching them. Feel the noise that the fabric makes. Every time you touch your camera, you're going to be making noise and it could be picked up by the audio gear of your video equipment. But those are super warm gloves. So if you're doing something else and noise doesn't matter to you, pretty decent. And uh, here's a camouflaged uh, ski mask there too that cuts down your eyes and everything else, but it's in your way. So doesn't work for viewfinders but here's my gripe today I buy new boots every couple of years these are mock wetland boots you won't believe what they cost they're nice and insulated they're really good boots but they run about 180 bucks so if you're out in farm country where I am these are muck chore boots I've been wearing these for three years and they're pretty much uh, at the end of their use those are only 120 bucks so not too bad and uh, I was looking at muck boots again, but now the prices on everything have gone up, but I did get stuck. I bought these brand new from the muck website. These are sport ankle men's woody boots and they're $145 just for these, but they're convenient. I couldn't find anything else in this quality as an ankle boot. Uh, so I like those and I bought them, but you know what? When I started looking around, um, I thought, you know, I should buy things made in America, but these are also made in China. I was surprised. All of my muck boots are made in China, except for the ankle ones. They're made in Vietnam. So anyway, I started looking around at other boots, and I landed on something new. I'm going to share that with you today. Another set of boots that are inexpensive, but uh, I'm still showing you the lugs and everything because you can see that I'm hard on my boots. I live in rural Pennsylvania. I go out a lot and uh, there's a lot of wetlands so I need tall boots too so that's a consideration and uh, I want to be able to sit still outside so I also have this uh, these coveralls guide gear I got these on Amazon they're made in Vietnam also super warm and they're waterproof I often get caught out in the rain I don't want to move because what if there's wildlife right in front of me and all of a sudden I'm getting soaked and I decide it's time to move these are the boots I'm talking about today Hysia or Hysia, I don't know what the name is, but they had really good reviews on Amazon. 2,700 plus reviews that were over 4.5 out of 5. So I thought I'd check them out. And one of the reasons I really like them, aside from the fact that they have a nice heavy lug on them. By the way, the tread on these, it looks hard, but it is uh, soft enough so it gives you traction on wet surfaces. So if you're walking across a deck right after a rain or something like that, or we're transitional here with sleet and snow, uh, with some melting snow on your pavement, these have good grip. So they help me out in the woods and right on the sidewalk. But uh, they're only $80. That's why I thought, what do I have to lose by trying them out? I mean, they're $40 cheaper than even the chore boots, let alone half the price of the wetland boots that I get. And these are made in China too, no big surprise. I got size nine. And by the way, these are 16 and a quarter inches tall. You can get them all the way up to 17.7 inches tall if you've got big feet, because the height increases with the size of your foot. You've got the strap along the back, so you're not gonna lose your boots in the mud. And if you step into deep snow, the snow's not gonna pile down your boot. So here they are compared. Wetland on the right. The Hissia boots on the left, half the price. So what do I have to lose? Today we have a big snowstorm coming in, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go outside, try them out. I've been wearing them, I just haven't worn them to test the insulation value. So they're really soft on the inside. I didn't wear heavy-duty, thick hunter socks or anything like that. I'm wearing normal socks. I'm going to go outside, we're going to look at some wildlife, and uh, I'm going to tell you 
how comfortable the boots are. So, and there's the camo, of course. These are my only camo boots, by the way. I've always bought just green boots or brown boots or even black boots. I don't know if it matters when you're walking in the snow, if your feet are in the snow, um, if animals are going to see you or not. All the edges are glued. The uppers here are pretty stretchy, if you notice, in the other boots. Um, the hard material goes right up near the top. These, they have the soft material at the top, so if you've got difficult calves or something, you can strap it right in. And there's a strap across the back. So here we are outside. Yeah, blended right into the snow. You can barely see that I'm even out there. Now what I like is to hear nature. Those are all the noises we should have. That's where those gloves come in. So the fact that they're that soft polyester means that we don't hear them because you're holding camera equipment. If you had leather gloves on, every time you move your hands, you're going to hear it through the audio. So we can actually hear the snow falling, birds singing, and we're going to see some wildlife in this video. And of course, this is the pond, but we need to go to the woods because I'm going to tell you how I do things. Got to give you the overview here. There's a storm coming in. It's a heavy one, in fact. Today is November the 17th. And look at this duck. It's a wood duck. Okay, it's just a decoy. I review products. That's one of the decoys I had to review, but it's so real looking. I just leave them on the pond. So the wind hasn't picked up yet. But I also thought maybe you want to know what it sounds like when we're walking. So these coveralls, for example. That's the noise, the swish swish of your coveralls. I don't know that there are any really silent walking boots. But I'm following deer trails in here. We have a lot of deer going through the woods. So my method is to find a spot where I see this traffic. And I like to see where the traffic converges. And then I'm going to pick a spot near a tree. And I'm going to settle down in the snow. And then I'm just going to wait. And when the snow comes in and starts falling heavy, it's going to cover me up and help hide me from the nature, I hope, to video. So I can tell you this, though. These boots are warm. So even without the heavy socks, my feet are nice and warm. And you must be wondering, how cold is it, though? Well, it's 29 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not a super cold day. But I'm borderline too warm. And that's the combination of, of course, the coveralls that I'm wearing, the boots, everything together. The gloves, the hat. By the way, the hood on that guide gear jumper there on those coveralls extends way forward of my head. Which is a huge benefit if you're a photographer or if you're shooting video. Because it keeps rain and snow and things like that from falling down onto your viewfinder. So it's a win when and if you notice too you can't hear my breath and that's because of that nice open vent on the front of that cabela's hood that i wear it took me a long time to find one that wouldn't let warm air come up around my eyes fog glasses if you wear them or worse fog the viewfinder so you can't see the video that you're trying to collect so that's one of my chicken coops Notice that the door is shut because there's a thermal interlock on that. That's a coop tender. Closes on its own and doesn't open unless it's warm. This is a dark-eyed junco. Some people call them snowbirds. And that's on a prairie fire crab tree. That is a black-capped chickadee. And notice we're hearing nature and nothing else. And there's a cardinal, female cardinal, also in the prairie fire crab tree, which provides a lot of winter food. Even wild turkeys will fly up into this tree to eat those. And that was a tufted titmouse that took off there real quick, so you only got a glimpse of it. Light cap chickadee, no great surprise sneaking up on one of those. And now the snow's really picking up, and it's getting later. In fact, it gets dark so soon here. Now we've got weather warnings, by the way. The city of Buffalo, New York is to the northeast of us, and they're going to get several feet of snow. They're putting out warnings to everyone. So I'm just hanging out because I'm trying to get a sequence of a deer. I figured if I'm quiet and still and stay out here long enough, 
I can show you something worth looking at. Stay with me. Because one shows up. Right on cue. Listen to the birds. The wind is picking up. Now it's really coming down. I figure weather like this, if you're sitting still, let yourself just get covered in snow and you'll start to blend. And if you're up against a tree or something else, then your silhouette won't stand out. And you get a chance to see what's going on. So not making noise, not moving too much. I did not camouflage the camera, the camera's black. But I don't think that wildlife pays too much attention to a disembodied camera that's just sitting there and everything else is camouflaged. These birds don't care, it's no great surprise to sneak up on a black-capped chickadee. But guess who shows up next? Not just a white-tailed deer. But this buck right here. It's getting dark, you can see that the video quality is getting noisy, it's grainy. He doesn't know what's going on, but he's listening to every little thing. If your gloves made a noise, if you swished your sleeves against each other right now, he would lock right into you. The video camera makes a little bit of noise, and he looks right at me. Now he's a little nervous, but he's checking it out. If I were a hunter right now, I would be harvesting a buck, I guess, if they're in season. This is eight points, at least. He's healthy looking. And he senses something. I'm losing him. But it was a great opportunity to video a deer, at least. And show you the benefits of not being too cold while you're outside, so you can sit still for hours and stay warm. And that was the case with these boots. With these coveralls, with the gloves, with the ski mask. And now the snow's really coming down. I hope it was helpful, and I hope I can save you some money by telling you about the Hesea Apollo Basic Hunting Boots, 80 bucks. Thanks for watching.